Achoo! This thing ain't loaded. I think the heat's getting to your head, Carl. What is that thing? It's a laser thermometer. You point it at stuff and a laser beam comes out and then it reads the ambient temperature of whatever it's bouncing off of. Oh, that's cool. That rocks 132 degrees. Yeah, it's pretty toasty out here. This sucks. Let's get on this. All right, so what are we doing today? We are taking a look at how temperature impacts uh, bullet impact. Mm -hmm. Now, there are two ways that this can happen. The one is, what is the difference in the ambient temperature? And we don't have any way to control that. Nope, we do not have the power to control the weather. However, last time you fired this gun, it was dramatically cooler than today. Yeah, it was 75, maybe 80 degrees. Somewhere around there. And today we're looking at an ambient temperature coming off of a plant of 108. All right. However, the other, the other variable in temperature that we can impact is what's the temperature of the ammo? Is there a difference? in how much pressure is generated when a cartridge fires uh, based on what temperature that cartridge is. So last night I stuck a box of Hornady 65 Creedmoor 140 grain ammo in the freezer and I've got it out over here in a cooler with some ice packs. So we've got ammo as cold as we can get it and it's going to be in the 40 degree range I think. And then we also have some ammo that's just been sitting at ambient temperature. It's been in the shade in a bag so it's not exposed to direct sunlight. And that's going to be 80 or 90 degrees probably. And then we've got some ammo back over there that we took out of the box and stuck on a dark rock sitting directly in the sun which is going to like melt if we don't do this quickly. And the yes. question is, if we shoot a three round group of each of those, how much change in elevation are we going to see between them? What's the elevation dispersion? Exactly. So when I was shooting high power, there was always this argument about which powder was least temperature sensitive. Because you know you have your log book and your data book, and by the way, this is very important, mm -hmm. especially for ambient temperature, elevation. If you're doing true precision shooting, you need to record where you're at, the temperature, the light conditions, the barometric pressure, maybe, I didn't worry about that one as much, wind conditions, all these things. And those things all turn into this long plotted graph of my ammunition with this powder and these primers at this elevation, at this temperature, has this zero at this. Right. And you needed that. If you went to Camp Perry to shoot a match, or you went to 29 stumps to shoot another match, it mattered. Because those matches, you didn't have ciders. You had to get a good hit from the beginning. So your dope mattered. In fact, if you could, you'd have dope from the range you were at on the same month in the same temperature, if you could have it. Right. So you should record all your shots. But Absolutely. One of, the, one of the things guys would do is they'd be very cautious about their ammunition being exposed to the sun. You'd even see them putting their hat over it or even having it in a cooler. Well, we've got some in a cooler. Uh -huh. um, I think we should find out if it makes a difference. Yeah, let's find out if the actual amp temperature of the ammunition versus the ambient temperature matters. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, we are shooting three round groups because we're not really interested in accuracy. I'm not trying to see if the, the tightness of the group changes. It won't. Um, what we are interested in is where's the vertical dispersion of those groups. Elevation and, dispersion. And having three rounds means that much less time for the ammo to either cool down or heat up in the rifle while I'm trying to shoot a string. So, all right, let's do it. Your, your rifle's it. 118 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. Yay! All right, let's do it. This is why rifles are black, right? Black yeah. is cool in the desert. Black rifles are awesome. Awesome, yeah. All right, we're going to open up our cooler, and we're going to test the ambient temperature. Ah, it's over here. Not that one, the other one. This is a very convoluted cooler. We're going to pull out the ammo, which you can see is in this insulated box with some towels around it and some ice packs. I can feel that it's cold in here. And there it is. Box of Hornady ammunition. Let's just pull three of them out, test the temperature, and then you're going to run over there and shoot it. Yep, you can test it right there. Here we go. 11 degrees Celsius. It's coming back as 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 9 degrees Celsius. Okay, so 50 degrees, 9 degrees. They are cold to the touch. Give me a fourth one just in case I need one more shot. Now I'm going to put that back in the cooler in case we need more. All right, and I'm off to the rifle. All right, Ian's going to try and give us a decent three-round group at the paper at 200 yards with the refrigerated ammunition. How's that feel? All right, I can see my group. It's not the world's greatest group, but uh, hopefully we'll see a difference with the next two.
Groups open up when you fire under time stress. Yes, they do. All right, so now we're gonna check the ammo that's in the shade. Ninety-one degrees Fahrenheit, thirty-one point nine degrees Celsius. All right, let me load up a couple rounds to go with four, just in case I need another shot for some reason. All right, and now I'm off to the rifle. I think I may be completely over the top of the paper. Let's go find out. Yep. All right, we're moving on to the hot stuff. 127 degrees Fahrenheit, 53 degrees Celsius. Yow. That's hot. That is hot enough that I'm wearing a glove to load these things. That's some hot tamales right there. Yeah, I'm not touching that with my bare hands. So now I need to be brisk about this so they don't cool down rather yeah. than not <laughs> heating up. A rare circumstance in which you're worried about the ammo cooling off. All right, I guess we'll go check them out. Yep, let's go take a look. All right, so we're back. You've fired nine rounds at your target at 200 yards. You have a one minute of angle group for eight of those nine rounds and one crazy Ed Gein Boop. flung out to the right. Yeah. We already confirmed that the box has Ed Gein on the cover for Hornady ammo, so we're calling these crazy Gein's. So without that flyer, you got a one minute group. It's not bad. And with the flyer, you have a- A two minute group. Two minute group. Eh. You remember, groups open up under time stress. Yes, they do. Anyways, one minute for eight rounds is pretty fantastic. Oh, thank you. But here's what we come to find out. The ambient, the, the cold, and the hot. We're all there. So <laughs> we circled the first three rounds that were cold, and then when I said I thought I shot over the target, it turns out I shot into the exact same group and wasn't looking right in that spot. Um, so at that point, we had also put on the second crosshair just in case we were shooting high. Didn't need it. I was aiming right here the entire time and put all nine rounds right at this elevation. So what you ended up doing is filling in that bullseye that we drew around your original three round group. Yeah. So what does this tell us about this ammunition regards to the temperature of the ammunition based on your elevation zero? It really doesn't care. It has no measurable effect for any real practical application. Right. Yeah, you took this to a thousand yards, maybe, but even then there's so many other factors that are gonna be so much more important. We're not, I'm not gonna say from this that this is conclusive and that means that no ammunition or no powder has no effect. No, that's definitely not necessarily true. This ammunition, this powder in this environment with a wide dispersion of temperature from cold to hot right. did not have enough of an effect to worry about. Right, in total about, what was it, almost 80 degrees of temperature variant. Mm -hmm. Now, um, at a bench resting competition where people are measuring stuff in the, in the tenths of inches, it would matter. Well, yes, but then so would the chicken bones that you rolled before you shot. Or the rubber chicken you wrap around your neck <laughs> is your good luck charm. But anyways, for your practical applications, for what we're doing with the Precision Rifle Series, irrelevant. Zilch. However, you hit high. Yes, we did notice something very interesting, which is when we last zeroed this rifle, it was literally a couple months ago, and it was like 75, maybe 80 degrees out. It was nice and temperate. Uh -huh. And I was uh, zeroed here. And now it's 100 to 105 degrees, and I'm hitting here, which is, if we look at the center of that group, three and a half inches high at 200 yards. So how many minutes of angle is that? That's one and three quarter minutes of angle high because the temperature went up. Now that's interesting because there's a formula out there that I never had to use in high power, but for every 20 degrees of, of temperature change higher up, mm -hmm. you would adjust one minute of angle at 300 yards. Okay. This follows suit. We are not at 30, we're not 20 degrees, we're 30 degrees ish above ambient temperature that you fired this zero. Yep. And we're hitting a little over a minute high. Yep. 
that follows that formula fairly well. Yeah, it's a good rule of thumb. Good rule of thumb. It's not precise, but it gets you close. So what's happening is when the temperature goes up, the air actually gets less dense. Because it's less dense, it takes less energy for the bullet to punch through it. So the bullet doesn't slow down as quickly as it would when the air is cold and denser. And therefore you lose. As a result, it's going faster when it hits the paper compared you... to when it was colder, it was going slower when it hit the paper, which means it has more time to drop. And therefore you have less drop when it's hot, more drop when it's yep. cold, based essentially on the ballistic coefficient of the cartridge and the friction of it going through the air. Right. Temperature yep. goes up, impact goes up. How about that? So what we learned today was that at least with your ammunition in this rifle, with Hornaday Cor uh, Creedmoor 6.5. Yep, 140 grain. The ammunition being hot or cold or in the shade or not in the shade, in the sun or in a cooler, doesn't matter. Arizona desert here, I can leave that stuff out in the sun until it's too hot to actually touch and it will not change where it hits. But we did confirm something we knew already and that ambient temperature has a greater effect and we see that in your group oh, right now. A very substantial effect. Right, if you were shooting for that eyeball, you would have missed. Yeah, if this were a four inch plate, only maybe a couple of my shots would have just barely skimmed it. And for a sniper shooting ahead, that, that could have missed. Yep. It actually could miss. Yeah. So, you know, maybe your powder and cartridge would be different, so don't think that this necessarily states that you wouldn't have this problem with like tack or something. But with this ammo, negligible. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned something interesting and new. And uh, if you enjoy this sort of content, please consider checking out our Patreon page. Uh, subscribing there for a couple bucks a month really uh, is the biggest thing that allows us to con continue coming out here and doing this sort of footage for you. If you can't afford that, we certainly understand. Just uh, tell your friends, subscribe to the channels on Full30 and YouTube, and uh, pass the videos around. Thanks yeah. for watching. Share the video, please. Thanks.